Hi there! Just a quick updated guide on how to get Guild Wars 2 running on Steam Deck and on how to configure your controls. This guide works for both Steam and non-Steam accounts. I've done this video before, but since the Steam version came out, the process got significantly easier. I've delisted the previous video, but if you still need it for one reason or another, I've put a link in the description below. If you followed my previous guide, you're still able to play just fine. Though you might want to reinstall the game using this new version if you want a better choice of controller layouts. Alright, first of all we need to download the game. Just search the Steam Store for Guild Wars 2 and choose Play Game. Now follow the steps on screen to start the download, which will take a while. In case you're wondering, this will also work with an ArenaNet account, so don't worry about using Steam for this. Once the download is finished, select the game in your library and go to the controller options. Make sure the template Keyboard, WASD and Mouse is selected. If it's not, select Browse Community Layouts, go to Templates and select it. Don't worry, we'll choose a better layout later. If you're using your Steam account to log in, you can skip this next segment. It only needs to be done if you're using an ArenaNet account. As it's not possible to link your Steam and ArenaNet account, you'll need to convince the Steam client not to use Steam for logging into the game. Fortunately, this is very easy to do. Select the game in your library and click on that button with a cogwheel on the right side of your screen, then choose Properties. Now type the following into the field Launch Options. Minus Provider Space Portal. I've put that in the video description if you want to check your spelling. Alright, exit out of the game's properties and try launching it. If you see the account and password fields in the launcher, you've done everything correctly. One important thing to mention is that you can't buy stuff with Steam when using an ArenaNet account. So don't buy expansions or living world packs on Steam if you're not using a Steam account to log in, as you won't be able to access your purchases. Once you've started the game, you'll see the launcher. Use the right stick or trackpad to move the mouse and the right trigger to click. You can also use the touch screen. If you're logging in via Steam, you just have to click the login button. If you're using an ArenaNet account, Click into the text boxes and press Steam and X to open up the on-screen keyboard. Enter your credentials and log in. Now click on play. You could jump in right away, but I'd recommend optimizing some of the settings first. Let's start with the DEX performance settings. Open up the performance menu using the dot 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 button below your right trackpad and selecting the battery icon. Now open up the advanced view. Activate use per game profile so your settings only apply to Guild Wars 2. Now set the refresh rate. I'd recommend something between 40 and 45. It's a nice compromise between snappy feeling gameplay, stable performance and a good battery life. The frame rate limit should automatically be set to your refresh rate. If not, change it to the same value. If you want to have some performance stats on your screen while playing, you can choose a performance overlay level at the top of this page. This can show you details ranging from FPS and power consumption up to the load of every single CPU thread. Now onto the game's graphics settings. First, make sure Enable DX9 rendering is disabled. Although everything is translated to Vulkan when using Linux, it's still a major performance boost when translating from DX11 and not DX9. As you can see, I'm playing with everything besides character model limit and quality turned up pretty high. This runs pretty well, but if you don't like occasionally dropping below 30 FPS, I'd recommend reducing reflections, shadows, shader or texture quality, and maybe disabling ambient occlusion. 
you can pause the video here if you want to copy my settings. I'd also recommend setting the interface size to small, so there's less interface and more game on your screen. You might also want to move your map to the top right side of the screen and resize your chat box. This gives everything a bit more room. Alright, time to get the controls set up. I'd recommend logging in with the character you want to play on your deck and going to a place where you can test everything out. You can use the left stick to move your character when using the template we've selected. Now press the Steam button and select Controller Settings in the menu and once again Controller Settings on the bottom of the screen. Now choose Browse Community Layouts and choose Community Layouts at the top of the screen. You'll now see a ton of controller layouts created by members of the community. They are ordered by likes and total playtime, so the ones further up are probably pretty good. You can select any one of them and return to the game by pressing the Steam button again. The controller layout should be active instantly and you can try it out. You can view the detailed mappings of a layout by going to the controller settings again. Play around with a few configurations and find one you like. The layout I have created and which I've been using for about 100 hours of playtime by now is available too if you want to give it a shot. It's called Radial Menu Skills, Mounts and Action Camera by Nyankas. It's made to be as intuitive as possible while still making every profession playable. Let's take a closer look. First, this is based on the action camera, so you won't have a cursor outside of menus, but a reticle. You move your character with the left stick and the camera or cursor with the right one. The A, B, X, Y buttons are what I call important stuff, so things you need often. A is jump, B is dodge, X is use, and Y is Heal or Skill 6. The triggers are your mouse buttons. The left one is a right click, the right one is a left click. As we're using the action camera, this also means your right trigger is your weapon skill 1. Your other skills are bound to radial menus on your touchpad. The right touchpad contains weapon skills 2 to 5, while the left touchpad contains your profession skills 1 to 4. The left shoulder button acts as a modifier key. If you hold it down, the mapping of the touchpads changes. The right touchpad now contains utility skill 1 to 3 as well as your elite skill. The left touchpad contains profession skill 5 to 7 as well as the special skill. The right shoulder button is used to mount up or use mastery skills. You'll probably have to map those functions to the keys I've used in-game. I've put a list of all the non-default key bindings in the description. If you hold the right shoulder button down, the right stick turns into a radial menu for selecting your mount. The right touchpad turns into a radial menu for your mastery skills. Pressing down on the left stick swaps your weapon pressing down on your right stick toggles the action camera. The directional pad is used to open up your inventory, hero, guild and contacts panel. The select button opens up your map. The start button is mapped to escape so it closes windows and opens the options menu. The left back buttons are used as a mouse wheel so you can zoom your camera in and out or scroll through crafting recipes. The right back buttons are both bound to show enemy names. If you're on a mount, you can use your mount special skills using X and B. If you're on a skyscale for example, you can dash using B and descend using X. This layout doesn't contain every single keybind the game has to offer, 
but I think it has all the important stuff in convenient places. My first and foremost goal with this layout was not to have to think about the controls while I'm playing. I hope to have achieved that, but I'm probably not the best person to judge it. So if you think you can improve on this layout, feel free to modify it to your heart's content. Maybe you have a great idea on how to make playing Guild Wars 2 on deck even better. Alright, controls are done, you're ready to go. Though there's one common issue you might want to be aware of. If you experience unusual lag or disconnects, it might have to do with the deck's Wi-Fi power management. The device currently has some issues with a few network setups, especially 5 GHz meshed networks. If you experience such issues, go to your deck's settings, system, and check enable developer mode. You should now have a new settings category, developer, right at the bottom. Go there and turn enable Wi-Fi power management off. I've not experienced any noticeable change in battery life, but I definitely have fewer disconnects and less lag since I've done that. Okay, you should now be ready to play Guild Wars 2 on deck. As always, if you have any questions, either leave a comment below this video or contact me in-game. My display name is Nyankas7143. You can copy paste it from this video's description. Alright, that's it. Thank you very much for sticking with me. Hope you enjoy. See ya!